Hello, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, in this video, we will look at uh, hard disk partitioning. Um, let's look at the objectives first. Uh, well, of course, we'll cover uh, hard disk partitioning concepts. Uh, we'll talk about what basic and dynamic disks are. That's from Microsoft. And we'll talk about um, you know the C drive, D drive that you would normally see in your laptop. I mean Windows based systems primarily a laptop or desktop. So th th we'll cover these objectives in this particular video. So before we dive into the concepts let's take a, 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 a quick analogy. Uh, say you know you want to build a house. You have a piece of land uh, now the next step is in order for you to build rooms, you know, for kitchen, bedroom, restrooms, living room, drawing room, study area, you know, whatever that might be, you have to allocate some space from this piece of land. And then, of course, you know, you cannot have one open hall and use one corner as kitchen. One, I mean, you can practically do that but that's not the purpose here so you know you would build walls you know so that you separate the area that means you are partitioning it so you end up with something like this you know you build walls and have an area for kitchen bedroom study living you know of that sort I believe uh, uh, I believe uh, you're, you guys are familiar with this particular example. So primarily what we are doing is we're taking a piece of land, partitioning it, and then you know, allocating you know some space you know for each type of room. This is exactly what we will do to a hard drive. Okay. Let's uh, first look at the partition types that are available so you know before I even jump into this these concepts well um, you know the primary external logical these are very old terms and um, maybe 30 35 year old concepts and they are around they are still valid the, even the latest and the greatest operating system Windows 8 does support it that, but that's how it is. But I mean, to begin with, these partitioning concepts were not really designed for Microsoft. They were not designed for Microsoft. Even before Microsoft came into picture, they had older operating systems. You know, they had these concepts called primary external logical. And <clears> though these that you see, you know, basic disk and dynamic disk is actually of course from Microsoft they came up with those terms and volume of course it's related to Microsoft in terms of dynamic disks but volume by no means is a Microsoft term or anything uh, we'll talk about that is this as well so primarily so you know partitioning uh, types you have primary external logical basic disk dynamic disk and volume now let's first talk about uh, you know primary partition. A physical hard drive HD here I mean HD is representing represents hard drive. It's a short notation. Um, so a physical hard drive can ho can have up to four primary partitions. That's a max. You cannot have more than four. And in order for you to boot from a particular partition using your operating system, the partition has to be primary and it has to be active. So for you to boot from this part, sorry, for you to boot from this partition, number one, it has to be primary and it also have to be active has to be primary and active. It's, this is a very important concept. Next, as I told, uh, yeah, 
so four partitions four primary partition max in a given hard drive and in order for you to boot from an operating system sorry to boot from a partition it has to be primary and it has to be active now let's take a look at extended and logical now as I said, you know, on the primary side, you have a cap of four. That means you cannot have more than, you know, four partitions. But what if you wanted more? If you say you wanted, you know, say ten partitions, so that's where extended comes into picture. So, say for example, in this case, hard drive two, this blue line, you know, this is a primary right and I set it active that means OS is booting from this particular drive and I use the rest of the hard drive to configure it as extended partition extended by itself is not usable I mean there's nothing I mean you cannot use it after you create extended partition you have to create logical partitions within the extended partition once you have this then these logical partitions can be used okay so again I'm going to repeat it um, in this particular example we have blue line here representing a primary drive sorry primary partition and the red here represents that it's active meaning we can if we have operating system in this particular partition then we can boot off of this particular partition for the remaining of the drive we created one external uh, sorry one extended drive and then create a logical partitions inside the extended partition now these partitions can be used for storing data or for you know, database purposes or web server purposes you know for anything now next concept so we covered primary external logical next is basic so now this whole concept here it's basic it's called basic disk partitioning this is uh, Microsoft calls or refers to this type of partitioning as basic disk partitioning I mean there's nothing more than that it's a very old concept and those old concepts you know or referred as basic disk partitioning by Microsoft okay let's move forward here okay now let's want, let's um, talk about dynamic disks so okay here the box here the rectangle bell rectangle represents hard drive hard disk um, so what what happens is when you, when you um, take the hard drive and say that okay I want to use it as a dynamic disk or you need to convert it as a dynamic disk using Microsoft tools when you do that what what it does is it will partition the whole drive as a dynamic partition the whole it it will take up the whole drive and after you have the dynamic partition done what you can do is you can create volume inside it this is similar to you know having an extended partition this is extended and then you have what logicals logical partitions similarly similar to that you have a hard drive you made it uh, a dynamic disk or you wanted to do dynamic partitioning it will take the whole drive into account and then once it is done you can create volumes inside your uh, dynamic partitioning that's it I mean that's how that works um, by the way this concept is from Microsoft I mean if you go to a Unix world or if you go to Mac world you will not see this this is strictly for Microsoft now once you have these volumes within windows operating systems these volumes will appear as a disks or you know the ones that you see c drive d drive e drive whatever you see of course there is a some let's say c represents cd rom or dvd rom then the whatever alphabets that you see in your my computer or 
nothing but you know one of these volumes you know if it is configured or uh, i mean so if it is configured as dynamic partitioning disk then yeah you know these are nothing but volumes inside this particular dynamic disk nothing more to it it's simple it's just that uh, you have to get this basic understanding and you'll be just fine and uh, let's take a look at you know the uh, general uh, partitioning concept i mean not really concept but you know nine out of ten times you know you will see that the whole drive is partition and it's just one drive you know if you drive buy a laptop or with a 500 GB drive, you know, most likely it's just a C partition on your Windows system and it occupies or, you know, it represents a pretty much the whole drive. I mean, don't get me wrong. Let's say, you know, you buy a laptop from Dell or HP. They might have something called a partition that is for, you know, for system tools and all that used by the vendor and then the rest will appear as C drive. I mean, pretty much nine out of 10. I mean, if you ask me, is this a good uh, practice? Definitely no. The reason is if something happens to C drive, the whole data is gone. Um, you could, uh, you know, this is how it is done most of the um, home PCs. But uh, on the server side, normally you would have C drive dedicated for operating system and then they would put another you know drive separate from C drive it could be D E anything and they use this for a data like you know web server data or SQL server data anything anything it could be anything practically so that's uh, you know general partition concepts you know it's very common that when you talk about partitioning you know people also talk about file systems so let's uh, take a analogy again here flooring uh, so you you had a piece of land you partitioned it to build rooms and then you know you have to put some sort of flooring right you could have tiles in the living room or say marble and maybe tiles in kitchen and maybe in the restrooms, you know, you may have a little, you know, cheaper tiles, say. Um, so it could be different. And let's say right in front of the house, it could be a little bit different. So you, you are putting a different kind of flooring in each room. And that drives how you use a floor. Let's say, for example, if it is um, uh, carpet flooring, you know, if you drop something on it or, you know, It'll not break, but if you have a marble flooring or you know tiles, probably when you drop something might break. Um, so it's kind of defines how you use it. Similarly, you know when you have this you know partitions, you know you you know you format it and you know you with certain file system type. So in Windows, you know FAT, FAT32, NTFS, all the file system types. When I say a file system type, I mean, it's not hard, it's actually simple, I mean, if you kind of break it up. So in hard drive, what do you store? Primarily, files and folders. That's it. It doesn't matter what it is, it's always either a file or a folder in what? Windows. In Unix world, everything is file. It could be everything is file. Meaning, a file is a file, a folder is also a file, a hard drive is a file, anything is a file. So even before Microsoft came into picture, we had Unix, long time ago, right? So, so everything is file, so that means it's a file that we are dealing with, that's here. So it's a file, this is a system, so file system, and type defines what kind of file. So the file system type defines how the data is stored on the hard drive and how it is handled. And for the user like you and me, we don't have to worry about it. 
because the, we just say hey you know save my resume or save my this file or copy my this movie the operating system will take care of it so the first thing that you have to know is you know once you partition the hard drive you have to format it it's of no use if you don't do this you have to format it with a file system or, or format it as you know how you want to refer it with file system so this could be you know fat fat32 or ntfs in windows one as a part of uh, you know during once you have, i mean say depending on the operating system during this process you will assign in windows you will assign a letter meaning you know the, the, when you see the c drive d drive e drive and that's where it's coming from you partition it format it and during the process you actually assign it's a customizable if you have e drive you can always make it into a d drive or f drive or z drive but uh, that's what you do you partition it format it you know you assign a letter and that appears in your my computer and uh, a quick uh, differences here are between uh, NTFS and FAT. This is less secure. This is more secure. That's one of the difference because you can give permissions and all to files. In in FAT that in FAT and FAT32, you cannot give assign permissions to files. Now, when it comes to Unix, we'll we'll look at you know there are EXT, EXT2, and all these file system types. But we will kind of look at these types when we you know, deal with Unix in in a different video. So well, that covers uh, hard disk uh, partitioning and uh, at least a very very ten thousand foot uh, look into file system types. You know, it's just primarily I just listed the types. So again um, we have um, when it comes to um, our partition types we have primary we have extended we have logical and microsoft came with uh, you know basic disks and dynamic disks basic is nothing but the old style where you have primary extended and logical whereas dynamic disks concept of dynamic disks there is no more primary it's a it's it's a volume based so you create a dynamic disk and you create as many number of volumes as you want you know depending on your capacity of the drive well that's a brief introduction into hard drive partitioning thanks for watching this video